Hey YouTube, it's Alicia here. I hope everybody is having a great day. None other, I'm here to come and talk about the WWE's women's division. And we need to come and talk about these two qualifying matches that everybody is a part of. So as you know, the men just wrapped up their qualifying matches. And so now they're doing the women's qualifying, qualifying match. So four is actually already in the qual in the women's elimination chamber. Liv Morgan, Raquel Gonzalez, Oscar, and somebody else. It's on the tip of my tongue. And somebody else. So four of those spots has been filled. Okay, I understand those four being already being being filled because one, one, and let's just say one, um, because of their work in the women's Royal Rumble because they was the last four women in the Royal Rumble. I understand that, okay? I understand that. Now, we had two spots left. So, for SmackDown, we had a qualifying match between Zelina Vega, Shotzi, Shayna Baszler, and the returning to Natty. Natty, okay. Overall, Natty ended up winning. All right. I got some a lot to say about that. Okay, Natty ended up winning. I don't mind her winning, but I wish that spot had went to Soxy. Soxy, it's been we've been wanting to see more Soxy for months, and this was they could have had her um to win, but they didn't. They put a veteran in. Y'all get what I'm saying? Okay, none other. Natty ended up winning. She ended up beating out beating Zelina Vega, Shoxi, and Shayna Baszler for that spot. Okay. So tonight on Raw, we have Carmella, the returning Carmella. Really? Piper Niven. We got Meechin, aka Maya Yim, and we have Candice LeRae. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna explain something with these. Okay. Candice LeRae and Maya Yim. They wasn't they earned those to the, the, the their spot for the, to qualify to qualify to be part of this match. But I'm finna 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 give you something. Piper Niven and Carmella was handed their spot, y'all. Same thing with Natty. Same thing with Natty and Zelina Vega. Have we ever seen, we haven't seen Zelina do any wrestling in the last few months. Let's talk about it. We haven't seen Zelina um, do any work in the last few months. And I think um, her winning the Queen of the Ring was a waste and stuff. Now, I'm not dogging these ladies. That's not what I'm doing. But you got to consider, okay, you put all of these. To get me to say, out of all those women that I mentioned, Piper Niven, Zelina Vega, Natalia, and Carmella, those four women who I feel those um, qualifying spots was handed to them, what about, and I'm sorry, what about Dana Brooks and Tamina Snooker? Y'all didn't even consider having them part of this. This could have been a big opportunity for both of them. And y'all, I'm just one. Like people, I ask people, um, do y'all think Tamina Snooker and Natty was disrespected, slapped in the face? Or disrespect. Um, it was something else I said. I said I'll put um, y'all go over to my um, Twitter. I have a lot of questions up on my Twitter, so y'all can see what I what people been answering. And a lot of people felt like they was disrespected 
and think to get me to say where is and a lot of in one of my questions I asked what needs in 2023 what was something that really needed to be changed for that women's division in the WWE and a lot of people agree and I gave them a lot of things to pick from they need um all women's um the divas the women's division need their own writers and creative team um they need a female touch to um, um, are there uh, females in charge of, over them or it was a lot of things that I said and one of them that I said um, fairness in general and everybody said fairness in general for all the females and I kind of agree with everybody we don't we are not seeing fairness we are seeing certain people winning things we are seeing favoritism we see it on Raw and Smackdown and I'm now seeing it on NXT. Don't say y'all don't see it on NXT when it comes to that women's division over there in the men's division. I'm sorry. Sometimes it is that in the case in the men's division. And I do see that. And I'm going to say like this, but when it comes to that women's division, like I said, I've been seeing it for I'm going on four years. We need some more women title belts. We need an all-women's writers and creative team. And that's going to something I'm going to get ready to come and talk about. And I said, we need somebody over the women's division. I'm go I'm not saying WWE take the full TNA approach and having somebody over there. But I'm like saying if, we can, if you can get Stephanie back up in there and like let Stephanie be over the women's division and choreograph the show with um, Triple H, for the women's division, for we can see more of that women's division. I think that match when when we were supposed to have that match between Bailey with Bailey versus Becky Lynch in that sale match. I think if they had cut some of the men things, some of the um, male wrestlers things, we probably could have had that. I don't. I'm not doubting that, but hey, I'm just saying. Now, the other thing is, when it comes to that women's division, who are we always seeing holding a women's title belt? And I always have said, she don't, so I've been saying for the past year, two women that I've been saying don't need a title belt just to be featured on a pay-per-view. I'm gonna say, I've been saying it about Becky Lynch that she don't need a title belt to be featured on a pay-per-view. And I've been saying it about Charlotte Flair. She don't need a title belt to be featured on, on a pay-per-view. To give me saying that would tie up, that will loosen up a title, a women's title belt for the women's division to for they can go after. But now we get in for WrestleMania, it has been clarified that it will be Rhea Ripley versus <clears throat> Rhea Ripley versus, let's say it, Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair. I mean, how many times are we going to get that? I don't know. This is, I think this is like a second time for that, for them to go up against each other, but not at the biggest stage of all. I really would have wanted um, Liv Morgan to win. I'm sorry, y'all, but I'm being honest. I really felt like Liv Morgan should have won. She deserved that opportunity. She deserves to be featured. Now, we're looking, now, we got to figure out who's going to go up against Bianca for her women's title. I hope it's not Ronda Rousey. Because I, I think fans will agree with me. We do not want to see Ronda Rousey. Because I really feel like one of the biggest fails, um, the biggest um, disrespects to the women's division was when WWE signed Ronda Rousey. And she didn't even, um, she's using her formal MMA style to wrestle. I don't have a problem with that. But I really wish they could have just, just, delayed her for about two or three years to get her more wrestle training than having her using her MMA style as as her her MMA style as a, a wrestling gimmick and her wrestling moves. But I don't know we already got two others that do that. Shayna Baszler and Sonya Deville. But they have had um, wrestling training. They took years to learn it. So, I mean, that's my main thing. And so we're getting a lot of people, a lot of females um, from different, from MMA, from 
MMA to UFC um, coming in and doing using their wrestling styles that uh, in the wrestling ring, and that's the problem. And I asked the question when it came to Shayna Baszler, and y'all, some of y'all might hate me for this or not, but I did ask. I said when it comes to Shayna Baszler, is in the last, um, in the last from twenty twenty, from when she started until now. And all the injuries that she has caused to several women, could we consider her unsafe? And a, one person tried to come up at me and try to say, why are you calling her unsafe? That's not fair. I'm going, hold up. It's fair when all y'all fans was very quickly, very quickly to judge Nia Jax in the same way and say, oh, she's unsafe. But when I bring something up, on Twitter and literally just tell it like it is. Half of y'all on there attacks me from being honest, being truthful. Where are the fans that are truthful about certain wrestlers, about certain female wrestlers? Y'all truthful when it came to that came when it came to um Nia Jax, y'all was truthful about that. But y'all won't be truthful and acknowledge that she's unsafe. And I have said that and stuff. If you can recall, I remember the one person who was like got hurt, but then in that same week was released. And I'm going to have to mention the infamous WWE Black Friday of when a lot of wrestlers was released. And Sarah Logan was one of them. If you remember, Sarah Logan had did a match and... Her um, arm was broken by Shayna Baszler. I will. I'm gonna. I'm gonna link this. I'm gonna put this on my Facebook. And, um, on my Twitter, and she broke her arm. And I remember Sarah Logan's husband went to WWE, going, "What y'all going to do about this? That wasn't a fair match. She broke my wife's arm." And Sarah Logan's husband did confront her. I can actually remember, um, I heard it was some rumors, and this is just coming from the mouth, the horse's mouth. It was some rumors that Rubby wanted to confront her, but all the men wrestlers wouldn't let him and stuff, and I'm glad they didn't. But you got to think, during that time, it was some things that was said. I was just like I said, I had an uncle that worked in the wrestling industry. But that's not just a here. But like I'm saying, there's a lot of things that we need to um look look at the women's WWE women's division. Because y'all know one of the biggest things I always talk about on there is Dana Brooks. And I said WWE owes Dana Brooks a women's title belt opportunity. And half of y'all like going, yes, she does. She is old. And so when I mention, anytime I mention that, oh, she has beaten Becky Lynch several times before and after pregnancy, half of y'all go, oh, you can't bring those times up. And I say, yes, I can. And some people will jump in like, she can, she can do that. She can do that. And then when I say she has beaten Charlotte, yes, I can. Because she has beating two of the top superstars of the women's division to date. And several others, one who is no longer there. If you know what I'm talking about, go by a different name now since she went to New Japan. But I digress. And I've been trying, making this argument for probably about two years now that Dana Brooks was screwed and I feel like yep that's how I feel I feel like she was screwed do I think some of y'all are not looking at that women's division of what we could get and not looking at the women's division from somebody who uncle worked in the industry versus what y'all think y'all know because if you look at me, I, my family is connected to the industry. Let's just put it that way. And um, I don't usually say it on here, but I'm saying it today. 
um, connected. And we need to see where we need to see where WWE could take that women's division. And because of that women's division, I have always said a lot of things about the women's division. I've said it's a lot of things that needs to be done. And I, it's a lot of changes that needs to be done. One, I really feel like um, no men should have anything should um, have anything to do with the women's division or writing storylines for that women's division because we don't get a women's, we need a woman's touch when it comes to that woman's, that women's division storylines. And everybody does agree that um, when they said, oh, they made comments and said, oh, the women's storylines doesn't make sense. And they say the women's storylines never make sense. Yes, they need a woman's touch. And Molly Holly is over there, and I don't see a female touch to it. I don't mind them producing the women's segments, but we need an all-women's creative team to get what we need to see for that women's division and fairness and stuff. Because I'm, I'm just going to say if we had a women's creative team, writers team, and they was doing that um that that Rollins War anniversary. They said, hold up, wait a minute, where is that women's um where is the women's vignettes? Where's the um WWE um women's division vignettes? They've been part of that. And then the one thing with me, I have been Saying for many of years, it's when it came to that tag team. When they first introduced that tag team, and they're going, oh, this is the first ever women's tag team. That wasn't the first tag team. They disrespected the women's, some of the women's of the 80s that held the women's title belts. And I do have a video on that, and I will list that in the uh, video list because I always put out video lists. There's a lot of things I could talk about when it comes to that women's division. But let me ask y'all this, and then the question of the day is the women's division, is it really needs a overhaul? And then the other thing is, um, was it right to exclude, and let me say, exclude Dana Brooks and Tamina Snuka from the women's um, qualifying match? Um, the women's qualifying match for the women's elimination chamber. Okay, that's all I have time for. Until then, I'm Alicia. Don't forget to thumbs up this video, comment below, and subscribe to my channel. Bye.